So about 10 years ago, I made a map called the One Block Survival. You spawned in on a single block of bedrock floating in space, just like Skyblock. The main difference was you only had one block to work with, and also you didn't start with any items, and there were no mods or data packs involved. Yeah, this whole map was just a joke to parody Skyblock, and you weren't supposed to be able to do anything to progress. But in the past couple of years, I've learned a lot about Minecraft and the crazy ways we can stretch the game's mechanics. You may have seen my recent video where I talked about how it's possible to go from one block of grass in vanilla Minecraft to basically a Skyblock-like setup. In fact, every item in the Skyblock starting kit, except for the lava bucket, can be obtained from just that one block of grass. Unfortunately, that path of progression would take a few hundred hours, require almost perfect play, and we can't even do it, because you can't spawn passive mobs on our block of bedrock. So yeah, if this video is about 15 minutes long, and hostile mobs can't give us any meaningful progression, how then do we get anywhere from our one block of bedrock? Well, we'll be using a curse technique that I discovered not long after I made that one block of grass video. So you may have noticed that we're playing on a very specific version of Minecraft here. This is Beta 1.9 pre-release 3, or my favourite update Mojang ever added to the game. This update added enchanting, brewing, and the end portals of the game. So it's a really huge update in the history of Minecraft. However, it was not a smooth release for Mojang, and shortly after releasing this thing to the public, they had to take it down twice. The first time was because they included data about the Ender Dragon, which they hadn't announced yet, and the second time was to address an oversight that they left in the game, which we will be exploiting in this video. And without it, there really isn't anything we can do to meaningfully progress. So before I reveal what this oversight is, I should probably address the issue of using a baser pre-release version of Minecraft that Mojang took down within minutes of uploading by saying this. If you want to see what's possible from just a block of bedrock in purely vanilla official releases of the game, you can do so by pausing the video right now. And yeah, you, you can't do anything without exploiting this feature. So to show you what this oversight is, we're just going to have to respawn really quick. And yeah, whenever you respawn in this version of Minecraft, you start with a few stacks of items. This includes the enchanting table and a bunch of bookshelves, plus two items that were still in development. One of these items is the end portal frame, which looks like this because that's still in development. And the other one is the end portal portal, which crashes the game if you hover over it in your inventory. Anyway, using these blocks we can build ourselves a really basic setup and get ready to fight the ender dragon as the first thing we do. Of course, killing the ender dragon without any weapons, armor, or tools is gonna be kinda painful. I decided to jump off the map a few times to collect a few blocks for the fight. I didn't want to collect too many though, since I do enjoy the idea of building up the base from a minimal set of resources. Also, the ender dragon doesn't yet exist in this version of Minecraft. Sure, Mojang left a few files around, but the end dimension doesn't yet exist, so we're gonna have to upgrade. Because this world file is so old, we'll actually have to convert it twice to get it playable in the newest version of Minecraft. And once we've updated, it's time to start killing the Ender Dragon. Now, this fight went a little disastrously. The next few minutes of footage are gonna be some of the dumbest things I've ever recorded. First up, the end portal leads to a room surrounded by endstone. And the problem here is that every single one of these endstone blocks takes 15 seconds to dig up by hand. So I have to spend a few minutes digging out, but once I escape, I'm ready to take out all the pillars. There are 10 pillars surrounding the islands, and I have to take out the crystal at the top of each of them. I'm going to be pillaring up to get to these things, but I do have to be careful. I don't want to get knocked out of the map and lose any of my 7 stacks of blocks. 6 stacks of blocks. Yeah. Not a great start. For my next attempt, I take a slightly smaller amount of bookshelves with me, and hope to hell that it works out. Luckily, I'm able to make it up the tower without the dragon murdering me, so that's pretty cool. Then I punch out the crystal, and it's time to move on. The next few towers go just about the same. But by the end of the fourth one, I am feeling pretty low on blocks. So from here, the plan for the next few pillars is to use enderpearls to try and get up to them. 
The underground area I started in works pretty good as an enderman farm, so farming enderpearls doesn't end up causing me several embarrassing deaths. As for using the enderpearls though, things don't go quite so well. Yeah. Eventually I'm able to get a couple of good throws in and salvage whatever something I had in this, but I pretty quickly run out of towers that are short enough to enderpearl up. In one of my last enderpearl attempts I also managed to make it halfway up one of the pillars, and I get stuck inside a block. Not sure how this happened, but it does prove that in theory you could get up here with just enderpearls, meaning you could beat the ender dragon fight using just your fists. Not something I'm going to attempt, but cool thought. After that, for the final few pillars, I went and got my collection of enchanting tables and started pillowing up again. For some reason, I decided to take a very large number of enchanting tables with me, and it made things super risky. If I died here, I would have to start using end portal frames to pull it up, and at that point I think I'd rather just reset the map because you can't break end portal frames. Luckily though, I was able to get through the final towers without losing all my items, so that was pretty cool. And now that all the towers are gone and the Ender Dragon has no way of killing itself, we can start punching it to death. And it was around here that I started to have a few thoughts about the Ender Dragon fight that I kind of want to put out. Fighting the Ender Dragon with just my fist kind of made me realise that the Ender Dragon fight in reality was a lot lamer than I thought in my head. So when everyone playing the game normally, the Ender Dragon fight is always a climactic event. It's something that a server will get together for, and you all want to bring your best enchanted gear and try and do as much damage as possible. There's a sense of reward in bringing better gear because you can do more damage and the fight can go smoother. This is probably one of the only times in the game where you can actually get rewarded for having top of the line enchanted gear. Plus, there's also a sense of tension in the fight, because you don't want to lose that cool gear since you've worked so hard for it. And all those things I just said are genuine good things about the Ender Dragon fight. The issue is, that's kind of all there is to this fight. If you take this fight on with just your fists and a bunch of items you don't care about, it kind of falls flat. The items I'm taking in with me, I don't really care about losing them. Even if later on they prove incredibly useful and I should not have been willing to risk these. Also, without a bow, this fight gets kind of boring. The Ender Dragon spends most of its time in the sky, just flying around and occasionally spewing out breath attacks. And these breath attacks are normally so easy to avoid that they don't really make a difference. The final thing I want to talk about here is the health pool of the Ender Dragon. Earlier, I said it was really cool how the Ender Dragon fight gave you the opportunity to use your enchanted gear with Sharpness 5 or whatever, and it felt good to use that because, you know, it's cool gear. But after fighting this fight with my fists, that illusion was shattered. I'm able to do a pretty decent amount of damage by punching this thing with just my bare fists. A lot more than I was expecting. And within four phases, I'm able to take out the Ender Dragon without any real hijinks. Except for when I got launched into the sky. But yeah, that is the Ender Dragon fight taken out from just a single block of bedrock in vanilla Minecraft. I know it turned into a little bit of a critique on the Ender Dragon in the end there, but I didn't want to be the one millionth person to do a hype up of the Ender Dragon fight. Especially because I don't think the Ender Dragon fight is the most interesting thing to talk about. What I really enjoy is the whole sandbox of Minecraft and the fun ways we can manipulate the mechanics to do crazy stuff. And killing the Ender Dragon there is just the start. I want to progress this map to the same point I would in a normal Skyblock series. And to do that we'll have to go through some interesting challenges that kind of haven't been done before, so I am super looking forward to it. I also don't want to reveal exactly what those things are, because I think there's some enjoyment for you guys to have in trying to figure out what I'm going to do ahead of time. So I've made the promise of achieving everything we can in Skyblock from just our block of bedrock. And that's going to be the goal for this video and whatever comes after. I want to recreate the Skyblock starting items and the basic Skyblock setup from just this one block of bedrock. I won't spoil exactly how I'm going to do that, but follow along and try and figure it out for yourself. Right now I'm going out exploring into the end islands to find something that will help me in the next few steps. To give you a hint, the item is not Elytra, but it is an item that can be found as loot in the end cities when we get there. Unfortunately, the spawn location here kinda sucks, 
And if I didn't have all these enchanting tables with me, I wouldn't be able to get very far from spawn. So if I end up running out of blocks, and the distances between islands is too far to enderpearl, it's very possible that I might just have to restart the map and go farm for more items at the start. Quickly though, I find an end city really quickly. The only question now is whether this end city is going to contain the item I'm looking for. To give you another hint as to what that item might be, here's what can spawn inside the chests in the end city. Also, just to remind you, this is all on the original world upload for the one block survival from over 10 years ago. If this world seed turns out to be perfect, then yeah, that would be amazing. But if this end city doesn't contain the items we need, we'll be screwed for a few more hours. So going into the end cities is incredibly dangerous without any armor. These guys do a huge amount of damage and I don't want to get hit by them. I'm not too worried about the floating effect since I have a whole bunch of ender fruit, but if I take too many direct hits I could very easily die. Also I managed to keep the 65 levels from the ender dragon so I would rather not lose those. Things do get a little bit panicky when I end up outside and trying to build a cage to save my life. The problem with sieging the end city here is that I don't really have a good way of healing apart from ender fruit. And sometimes ender fruit can kinda suck. So now I'm back outside the end city and I have to siege it again. Although this time, I think I can try and use ender fruit to my advantage. My goal this time is to just teleport around the end city and hope I can find the loot before I get killed. I also try killing a shulker this time, to see if it would be that hard to clear the space out slowly in case the random thing doesn't work out too nicely. Of course, the shulker just teleports away and I can't do anything. From there, I decide to teleport around randomly, and I make it straight into the chest room on my first go. And the items in here are absolutely perfect. The emeralds and pickaxe in here are going to be incredibly useful for our progression, although I was only looking for one of these items to actually get through things. That special item I was looking for is the pickaxe. The emeralds are still going to be super useful for trading with the wandering trader, so I guess it's nice that I found them as well. So with just these two items, I've kind of found everything I needed to in the end city. And the incredible thing is, this was in the first end city I went to, and it was super close to spawn. Pickaxes are not a common drop in these chests, so getting one on the first try is just insane. Plus, this is all on the world seed from the original one block survival upload from 10 years ago. This whole map was meant to be a joke, but here it is with a world seed that's basically perfect for progression. I am so shocked that it turned out this way, and there's so many things I could say, but we still have to progress and escape the end city. Before I leave, I decide to take the chests with me. Conveniently, this pickaxe is silk touch and I'm able to take the ender chest with me as well. After that, I decide to head back to base and keep all my stuff safe. This challenge has got off to an incredible start, but if I lose all these items now, I am kinda screwed. So I play it safe and head back to the main end island. The final thing I do before leaving is take the Ender Dragon Egg with me using a cool technique where you drop it onto a torch. With that done, I can return to the overworld and finally breathe a sigh of relief. Somehow, everything worked out amazingly, and I'm back from the end with all the stuff I need to progress through the rest of Skyblock. I don't want to reveal how that's possible just yet, but I'm sure this is something you guys can figure out in the comments. The reason I'm not going to say is to bait you into watching the next episode when it comes out, and also so you guys can think about how it's possible, because I think that's where the fun is here. Theory crafting and seeing all the crazy things you can do in Minecraft. So yeah, I think this is the part of the video now where I say thank you for watching and check out some of the other stuff I've done on my channel. Share the video with your friends and if you don't have any friends you can like the video and YouTube will send it on to someone else. Thanks for watching and see you in part 2.